Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota, and I'm here to bring you another live paper crafting class. This um, month of March, my paper pumpkin was timed sort of the same way as last month. It came after the weekend, which means I got it Monday. And that means I only had a couple days to prepare some projects. I usually post a video on the 22nd or 23rd of the month. And so my live happened to fall on the 22nd. So I decided to do the same thing that I did last month. And I'm just bringing to you live some paper pumpkin alternate project ideas with the March 2023. It's called 10 Years of Growth Paper Pumpkin Kit. Now, if you're a Paper Pumpkin fan, yay, right? You get to see, get to see some ideas. If you are not a Paper Pumpkin um, subscriber, you don't get the kits, then the projects that I'm sharing today, I'm going to do two fun folds. You can apply to a lot of different products. So don't worry about it. You're going to be just fine. And you'll be able to take these ideas and roll with them with other things that you have on hand. They're um, quite simple cards, and um, but of course I'm probably going to take up the whole hour because I have lots to share. But on that note, thank you so much for joining me, and a big thank you to Trisha Josephs and Lisa Marshall, who are my moderators. I have Lisa Marshall on Facebook, and I have Trisha Josephs on YouTube. So if you have questions, just know that they're here to answer them. So you can type away during the live broadcast, and hopefully they'll see your comment and they can answer you. Um, if you're watching after the live, again, this is 11 a.m. Central Time on March, what day are we on? March 22nd, 2023. So um, if you're commenting after the live, then um, I'll be looking at those comments later on and hopefully I can answer the pro um, uh, questions that you might have. If you have immediate questions, I do have an email address. It's the quickest way to reach me. Um, stamp your art out at comcast.net. In fact, if you're a prize winner, know that that is the way to reach me. We're going to do prize drawings at the end. So yes, I'm Rachel Tessman from stampyourartout.com and I share Lots of fun paper crafting projects each week. So thank you. And welcome to those of you that are new on the live. Yay. Um, all right. Let me think if there's anything else that I wanted to go over before we get started. I think that's it because this live is not going to contain a measurement supply list. Um, it's I have multiple projects, so I typically don't share uh, um, a measurement um, measurement thing written down on these videos. Sorry about that. With multiple projects, it's a little bit more difficult and time consuming to do that. But um, hopefully you'll be able to catch that. You know, just watch the video, pause it, then start it again. You know, follow the instructions that way. <clears throat> All right, let's go down to the desktop top so that you can see what I have to share. I also want to point out that you might see a different view in the background. I'm playing around with stuff in my studio. Um, I'm doing some revamping here, trying to do some, re not remodeling necessary, necessarily, but I'm getting some new pieces, um, uh, some pieces replaced and some new pieces in my creative crafting organizational stuff back here. And so, yeah, so there's some things on the floor down here, which I don't think you can see, but hopefully soon I'll have that all set up. And um, in the meantime, just working with different camera angles to see if this will work. So, oh, my head is kind of, hang on a minute, I'm gonna change something. It's very large. We're gonna, we're gonna shrink her down. There we are. <laughs> okay, so this is the kit. This is the kit that I'm featuring. Um, oh, thank you so much for chiming in, Carol, about being first time um, from British Columbia. Thank you for watching. So we have the 10 Years of Growth Paper Pumpkin Kit. These kits are awesome. They come to my mailbox monthly. If I ever want to take a month off, I can suspend. If I want to cancel for a, a period of time, let's say I'm going to take the whole summer off, I can just go into my account and cancel, and then I can come back when I want to get the kits again. Um, so it's, it's a very controllable type of subscription. You don't have to commit to a certain number of months. You can try it out for just one month. But it does come with... Uh, visual instruction sheets showing you how to put together the intended projects, which are shown on the front of the um, instruction pamphlet. Also on the back side, you can see supplies, you can see coordinating colors that are listed. Sorry, I'm kind of angling this stuff because I'm not used to the way my 
camera's position. I will try to get used to it. Um, also, there's a link to a how-to video so that you can see how to make the projects as is, as intended. And then Stampin' Up! does share, their artists share some um, creative ideas on the back that are different from the projects on the front, which is what I like to do every month. So, um, and then this just talks about like the upcoming kit next month and then um, some, some things to take note of for this kit. So the kit comes in a really great box. This one, it's, it's, um, it's designed to kind of coordinate with the kit contents. Now I have lots of supplies in here because I have been playing around. So I'll just kind of give you a, a look-see at what I've got. Um, and I, I have, um, yeah, two stamp sets. What? Two stamp sets? That's because this month subscribers got a bonus treat because we're celebrating 10 years of growth or 10 years of Paper Pumpkin. Um, Paper Pumpkin has been around for 10 years. I cannot believe it. I have made alternate projects with every single kit for 10 years. So 10 times 12, what's that? 120 kits, right? Yeah. 120 kits. So if you need ideas for a past kit, just go to my blog and click on the paper pumpkin tab and you'll be able to see lots of fun stuff from that. But yeah, here's the different card bases in the kit. Um, I was again playing around with stuff, cutting stuff up. You can see here's the envelopes. Um, there's lots of envelopes that come with it. I have actually two kits of supplies in here because I've been playing and um, just crafting like a mad woman. Um, lots of die cut pieces, leaves, all of this. Here's some label pieces. So on that note, let us, I'm going to shove this off to the side here and hopefully I'll be able to grab things as we need them. Um, let us go ahead and start with the samples. So these are the cards that you actually make with the kit. This one has a fun little bookshelf um, image on the front. Uh, we're going to take that piece and make a, our first card with that. And then we have a window that the plants are sitting in. You can see it's potted plants, right? And then we have, oh, thanks, Lisa. She says she refers to my library of alternates often. Thanks, Lisa, so much. And then we have this card. Whoops, got to turn it this way. Um, simple happy birthday. You could turn it into happy spring, happy anniversary. There's lots of stamps that, uh, stamp images that come with the kit that you can use. So I'm going to set those aside because we're going to come back to them in just a second here. We have the first alternates that I'm going to share with you. So I'm a scrapbooker and every kit I promise to have some scrapbook ideas, whether it's a full two page spread, whether it's a, you know, one two page or a one 12 by 12 layout, or sometimes it's even like a pocket page or a mini album, but I try to do something scrapbook related every single kit and I don't think I've missed a kit I don't know maybe maybe who knows <laughs> but we can see here that these pages look very similar to the cards that I just shared hmm let's bring those cards back in so let's take a look at this one again the bookshelf okay now here's that bookshelf pretty much just copied what it looks like on the card didn't I so you can take scrapbooking, especially if you have a kit where these cards are scrapbookable. Is that a word? Um, and you can turn your cards into a scrapbook page by just putting pieces down onto 12 by 12 paper. Uh, oh, Shirley loves it. She thinks it's the best that she's seen. Oh, it is one of my top ones too. Um, I can think of like three others that are just right up there. They're just beautiful. Remember the sunflower one? And then there was one with some pink, pink and purple flowers and some green vellum leaves. That was like one of my all time, time favorites. <gasps> there was a snowflake one. There was another one with some, per anyways, I could keep going. Um, but yes, this, uh, all I did was I take, took the label off. Everything else is the same on that page. And then if we look at this one and we pull in this card, again, all I did was take the label off, the sentiment label. So I tried to make this one an easy alternate because a lot of people think that you have to get all elaborate and bring in dyes and all this extra stamp sets and all these extra products. And you can, especially for an avid crafter. But if you're a beginning crafter or you're somebody who wants to just make it easy, you can make it easy. You do not have to make things super tough. Um, I added in 12 by 12 Regal's cardstock. 
that's the two bases. And I used shaded spruce, which is one of the coordinating colors for this kit. And then do you see this decorative stuff along the side here? Those are the envelope flaps, you guys. All I did was trim them off and I stuck them down like that and I kind of staggered them. This one is a full one, obviously. And then this one is of another full one but cut into two pieces and I did it that way because I wanted this one here to kind of point at this section just as this one is pointing at this section okay and then I also put another one up there so I used four envelopes but three cards and then the last thing I wanted to point out is this one is probably the most creative as far as like going a little bit different than the card instead of copying the card completely, I wanted to be able to fit in my photo mats. So I used the envelopes and the back of the cards for my photo mats. Um, these are four and an eighth by five and a half. Four and an eighth by five and a half. Four and an eighth by five and a half. These here are a little bit shorter. They are three and three, I'm sorry, three and five eighths by five and a half, three and five eighths by five and a half, three and five eighths by five and a half. And this last one, again, everything's from the three cards and the four envelopes. This one is four and an eighth by three and a quarter, okay? So what did I do on this last piece to kind of make it similar to the card? Well, I kept this in the same direction, added the happy to it, changed the birthday to spring. Um, I made this, uh, the leaves here stick out on the side more so it didn't take away too much from the title plus we didn't have the room for the pot so the plants couldn't really veer up and off the page right so I took the pot away from there I took the purple leaves out of there and yeah that's it oh and then I cut the card base the front of the card base into two pieces to make a strip so it's really quite simple to get into scrapbooking. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and dive into our first alternate card. We're gonna bring in some shaded spruce cardstock, but this time the shaded spruce cardstock is our eight and a half by 11 size, because that's easiest to make a card from it. Now, if you'd rather not purchase a lot of supplies, you could get, you know, just use another sheet of your Regals 12 by 12. We're gonna cut this down to five and a half inches. That's half of 11. And now we're going to we're going to shorten this up. But you're going to find that this is a funny way. Like why is Rachel doing it this way? I just found it easier. So we're going to shorten it, but we're first going to put score lines in. Okay? Our first score line is going to go to the 4-inch mark on each side. So we're going to have a little section in the middle that is going to be a half of an inch wide. Hang on, I'm going to zoom in just a tad here. Okay. So let's go to the 4-inch mark and score it and then we're going to turn and we're going to do the same thing on this side so each of those first initial score lines are at four inches which gives us again this half inch section in the middle do you see that okay again we're going to shorten this down but not until we've made our score lines so the next score line and i'm just gonna <laughs> i'm off to the side cheating don't tell anybody um i'm just going to check here to make sure i do this right i don't want to do it wrong and of course the lighting is bad. Hang on. Sometimes we have to cheat. Okay, I think I know what it is. Oh uh, yeah, one and seven eighths. Okay, so we're gonna go now one and seven eighths away from this. Rachel, do the math really quick. So instead of four, okay, two and an eighth. Yay, I did it. So we're gonna score two and an eighth inches in on each side, which is normally half of the four and a quarter, right? But we're not doing four and a quarter. We did four and we're also gonna do two and an eighth. You can do these at the same time. So you could first have done your four inches and then brought it to the two and an eighth. But I didn't do that. So pretend four and then two and an eighth. So now we have our score lines that we need. Now we need to trim off some excess. So from here to here, we have one and seven eighths inches. That's the gap in here. We want this to be able to fold in. <clears throat> But we don't want it to come quite to the one and seven eighths inch score line difference here. This we don't want it to line up with that. We want it to be just like a, a thirty second of an inch shorter. So this is where we're going to trim. <clears throat> we're going to go to. Um, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hang on. 
one and seven eighths, one and seven. I have to think again. You guys, this was a frenzy of creativity that was happening the last two days here. Okay, so instead of cutting off a fourth of an inch, now it's coming back to me. Instead of cutting, cutting off a fourth of an inch on each side, which in the end, two fourth inches equals the half, right? And that's how we could bring these sides together here. But we're gonna go a little bit more than that. So a fourth of an inch, but then we're gonna do one more smidgen. <laughs> we're gonna call it a smidgen. <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. <laughs> So we're gonna go just a little bit beyond. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see even more. Sorry if I hit the microphone. Here's the fourth inch, here's a little bit beyond. See, and you can apply this fold to any products. So now we're gonna cut, it's just a little bit beyond the quarter of an inch. We're gonna do the same thing to this side. So there's our quarter of an inch. We're gonna go a little bit further that way and we're gonna cut. Now when we fold those two sides in, they are for sure not going to interfere in case we wanted to fold. Oh, that's really close. In case we wanted to fold in that direction. Okay, so there we go. This is the front. This is the back. Let's go ahead and reinforce those score lines with our bone folder. This is a nice simple tool that anybody who gets kits would benefit from. Sometimes we don't have those strong fingernails. Um, you could use a butter knife, the back of a butter knife or, you know, anything else that allows you to score crisp. Okay, so there we go. There's our card. Do you see what's happening here? We're going to have a card that opens like a gatefold, but something kind of pops out at us, doesn't it? Now I'm going to zoom back because we're super close. Okay. <laughs> so next, let's go back to our kit and let's take our card base. So I got this fold idea from a swap card in our group. I'm just going to trim and I'm, I'm eyeballing. I think I'm cutting about a half of inch, half of an inch off of this side. Yeah, I went to a half of an inch. And then let's go ahead and just trim. I'm going up to about the same spot, which makes this a mm, little over three and a quarter inches on this side. Oh, I should have gone a little bit more. Let's go to three and a quarter inches. <laughs> All right. Hang on. There we go. So that's about even, right? Three and a quarter inches wide. And then let's trim off the same amount on the top and the bottom. And if measuring is not fun for you, you just take your scissors and you cut, right? I like measuring, I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna trim that and we're gonna trim that. And I'm just eyeballing. I'm just going about um, be like a 16th of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch away, just so that I kind of have an even look. And this does not look even, so we're going to trim that up. <laughs> All right, we just want to have a panel with a little bit of white showing around it. Is that okay if we're not measuring exactly on that one, you guys? Yes, Rachel, it is. It is. Don't worry about the measurements this time. All right, so that's going to be on the front of our card. Let me pull these away. These strips, for those of you who get kits, these could become sentiment strips. So don't throw those away if you are a kit person. Let's grab... Um, Let's grab one of the labels from our kit. Let's grab this one. In fact, bring that little guy back in. And we also need the pot for our plant. Let's grab this sheet. Oh, everything's sticking together. We want one of our pots. And we need, let's get a purple one too. And then we need um, a green leaf. And we could put more of these plants coming out of the pot but we just, we're just gonna grab one, make it easy. And then we're gonna bring in our ink. Now our ink is included with the kit, all right? So you don't have to have a whole bunch of inks because every time you get a kit, you get an ink pad and you get, where did they go? Here they are. You get stamps. You also get a clear block in your first kit, which looks like, like this. And it's the same size as our D blocks. So you can either, you know, just hang on to this one and use it, or you can start collecting um, the ergonomic ones, the ones that are a little bit deeper, you know, higher up, plus they have areas to hold for your fingers. 
So, oh, but in this kit, remember, we got extra stamps. How nice. All right, I think we're going to grab from this one, though, and we're going to stamp the one that says, To a Wonderful Mother. You could stamp also in this, in this same label piece. You could stamp, To an Incredible Woman. Here's to another year of growth. Sending all our love. Um, lots of choices. I like to use the larger version of my ink pad when I am creating with my kits, and I save these little guys for gifts, for um, for using with my um, when I travel to crafting retreats. Okay, we're gonna grab also our where they oh, here it is right here. These are a couple other things that you may want to have on hand if you are a kit maker. Uh, this is the stamp and pierce mat, and then this is. Um, my small grid paper and I like to just use that on top of my stamp and pierce mat so that in case I get ink somewhere but in this case because I'm not going outside my piece I want to have a nice dark background so that I can guide my stamp into the right spot if you have that contrast of color it's going to make it a lot easier to line up that stamp and stamp it down so it's nice and straight so there we have that in fact Oh, we have one other thing to stamp, and that's going to be on this piece. This is the leftover from the card. We're going to cut that down just a tad. We're going to cut it down. Remember, these panels here are about 1 and 7 eighths, a little bit shorter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 1 and 3 quarter inches, and I'm going to cut. I think that's what it is. Hang on, I'm going to peek again. With two cards that I'm going to share with you today, I want to make sure I get this right. Yes, <clears throat> one and three quarter inches and one and three quarter inches. Okay. Then each of these <clears throat> are the same height right now as our card, and I don't want that. So we're going to go to three. <coughs> Excuse me. Every video that I've had for the last, I don't know, three or four weeks, I feel like I have a coughing spell in the middle of it. I think we need the spring to come so we can open the window and get some moisture in this house. Five and three eighths. We're going to go to five and three eighths. And so we're trimming off just a little bit on the ends there. So this is where our second piece comes in that we're going to stamp. And we're going to mount, I'm going to get that out of the way for a minute. We're going to mount another stamp from that kit that says you, um, to a one, uh, to an incredible woman. <clears throat> And then I'm going to grab some tape. And this is just scotch tape, one-sided tape. You could use washi tape, whatever. And I need my reading glasses because my eyes are getting tired lately. Um, we're going to cover up the word to. Uh, just like that. Okay, we're covering up the word to, but we're not covering up anything else. Okay? So when we ink this up, it's going to say an incredible woman. Inking that up. Oops, you didn't see. Inking it up. But you can see how the, the tape is getting a little bit of ink on it. When you throw that away, make sure that you don't uh, put it in a place where it's going to, um, you know, get your fingers all, all inky. I'll set that right there. Okay, so now we're ready to stamp this down. And I'm going to stamp this about an inch above the bottom again because... I want to have a dark surface, and these are photopolymer, so it's good to have a little cushion underneath. We're going to stamp it right here on this spot. So I have an incredible woman. To a wonderful mother, an incredible woman. I could leave it as that, or I could find yet one other stamp in this kit. And I believe it came from, I think it's this one here. To call you, <clears throat> to call you friend is what it says. Okay, and we're going to ink up, we need the tape again. <laughs> we're going to first mask something, grab those glasses, Rachel, and <laughs> we are going to cover up the N on the word friend and everything right before it. I think I did it. So we're going to ink up that D. We're going to pull off the tape, if we can. And we're going to stamp that down. Again, everything's clear, 
So you can see right through, we're going to line up the N with the N. And I'm going to have to bring this closer to me, you guys. Can you still see it? Okay, let's see here. Hopefully we get that on there. Oh, it's a little off. Oh, well, that's because I have to stamp at an angle when I'm... <laughs> That's that's a little off. It's okay. It's okay, Rachel. Just breathe. <laughs> You'll be fine. Um, but yeah, you have to stamp in an angle when you're doing this stuff. If I put my head right above it, you would see the top of my head. And yeah, it's not the, not the area that I want to show off. Okay, so now let's go to this card base again. We're going to grab our seal adhesive. And we're going to put some adhesive along the sides. Stick this down in here so we have like a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. This is doable, right? You guys are already thinking of other products that you could put on here um, if you don't have the paper pumpkin kit, right? Hi, Pat. Hi, Leslie. I looked up right when your name showed up. Thank you so much for being here with me and for commenting. Okay, now this piece and this piece here need to get some decoration. So we're gonna come in with some different kind of adhesive. We're gonna bring in the multi-purpose liquid glue. So we're just gonna put a dab, because the card, the card kit does come with um, adhesive. Let me just point that out. It comes with these little things and these little things. These are mini dimensionals, which we also sell in the online store, okay? These are regular dimensionals. I'm going to be using the regular dimensionals because they go a little bit faster to add. Um, and then we have the glue dots, which work great. But for quickness, I'm just going to put a little dab of multi-purpose on most of these little leaves here. And just to a touch. Don't even worry about getting right to the end. You just need it to grab onto your cardstock. So I'm going to hold it by the top leaf. And I'm going to put it down into this spot here so that most of it is above that base area here. This is where we're going to put our pot. So just tack that down, let it dry. Now for our pot, quickness. Again, you could use the glue dots from the kit, but this is so much quicker. We're going to go ahead and put our, oops, <laughs> we're going to put our pot right about there, sitting on the shelf. And then, oh, that's not the pot we want. <laughs> Rachel, that's a different card, card piece. Okay, hang on. We want this pot. We're going to put this pot there. And that one's going to sit right in that spot. And then we want the other pot over here. And this pot's going to stick up about three quarters of an inch, just so it kind of looks like it's balancing out the other, um, the sentiments on the other side. And then this guy... I call him a guy because he looks like a little creature, but it's not. It's, um, it's leaves. It's like a potted plant that's more squishy. <laughs> okay, and this is going to go down. And I think, yeah, I added him this way, although you can flip him in all different directions. The kit instructions show this um, plant positioned in a different way than how I'm adding it. Uh, this piece, we're going to add dimensionals to the back of. And again, for quickness, I'm just going to add a couple that are regular size but it does come with mini dimensionals. And those are gonna go right, ooh, oh, I know what I did too. I took a scissors and I cut straight up here so that I could trim off and make a straight edge, okay? And that's gonna line up with the corner, this little corner here, zing, zing, like that. It's gonna line up like that. I just th thought it looked better. It didn't really like take away from the books on the shelf that way. So there's that piece. We're gonna put a couple dimensionals um, running down the middle here. One, two. Now they are about an inch away from the top and bottom of the card because I already know that this piece is not gonna go beyond, right? It's not shorter. So it's going to work. And I'm putting it on here rather than the back of this piece because otherwise I'd have to measure and figure out where the middle of this is. Okay, did I tell you who gave me this idea? I think I started telling you and then I completely like got sidetracked. I'm so sorry. Maria Friedman 
participated in our team swap recently with a fold that was similar. So I will show you her card. Okay, I took the backings off. And now what we want to do is we want to just hold this above and center everything so that it looks like we have the same amount of green border all the way around. The last bit of something or other that I'm adding is an embellishment. Oh, did I not put, hang on. Hang on. I don't think I put them, I didn't. I didn't grab those and put them on my table today. There they are. We have our brushed brass butterflies. So we're gonna trim up the side to open that container up. And, oops, there we go, slides right out. Now we're gonna take our Take Your Pick tool and add some butterflies to this card. So, um, peeking at my finished one, I have a little one kind of right there. I have a big one above over here. And then I have two more. I have a big one that is placed in this gap up here. I think I have it right about there. And then another little one right next to the word wonderful. How does this close? It's so cool, you guys. Isn't this the coolest fold? So it just folds in and folds shut. Ah, right? So when I saw Maria's card, I was like, that is so easy and so simple to do. So I'm gonna show you what she made. Here is her finished card. I took it out of the clear envelope when I got my swap card and I was like, no way, right? Is that the coolest or what? She's got it decorated a little differently with her panels. Like she's got designer paper in here and in here. But I found that with this kit, we didn't have a lot of decorative paper elements like the envelopes. There were only little thin strips. I didn't want to waste the envelopes. And I thought this is really nice and colorful enough where you don't really have to have any designer paper back there anyways, right? Her piece, it makes more sense because she's just got a white with a frame around it. So to have this decorative stuff on the outside edges made a lot more sense. So you want to look at your middle element. That's going to be the thing that's the focal point that you see on the outside of the card and the inside. I love it. You guys' comments. Brilliant. This is the best. <laughs> I know. Isn't it fun? Um, so you want to look at this middle element and you want to say, first of all, does it look good on the inside and the outside of the card? Because it's going to be shown in both areas, right? And then, um, is it real colorful? Because if it is, omit the designer paper. If it's not, bring some pizzazz in there, right? So she's got the pizzazz, whether you have it closed or open. And then the same idea where this is where you do your writing is on the sides. You could also flip it over and put it on the back side, but you know, why not put it on the inside so that when it's standing up on display, you know, it can say, happy Mother's Day to an incredible woman, um, whatever you are, and then you can sign your name, your top notch, and then she can look at it all the time and just know. So to a wonderful mother and incredible woman. There is that card. All right, then I've got another card for you. And this idea came to me from Miss Sylvia Werner. She is uh, a demonstrator who I met when Stampin' Up! went global, um, expanded beyond North America and into Europe and into the South Pacific, that sort of thing. We had this convention years back and she and I met when we were standing in line for something. I don't know, but it was so much fun. Here's a half a sheet of Orchid Oasis cardstock, by the way. You can tell from her last name, Sylvia Werner. She is from Germany, yes. And um, we've uh, gotten to be really good friends. Um, she started a YouTube channel and she is so talented. I've loved getting her cards over the years. And so I encourage you to click on the link in the description of the YouTube video and it will that description will get transferred over to the um, video that's on Facebook. So you'll be able to catch that too. But um, you'll, I would encourage you to click on that link and see some of the great ideas she has. So this is one that I saw. We were Zooming with her and her husband, Uva, on Sunday. And she told me about her YouTube channel. I said, you did? Yay! And so I went over there and I found this card idea and I adapted it. So she did, and it's not this exact same card, but she did, of course, the A4 size. So this is the A4 um, size, which is skinnier and taller. And I adapted the measurements to... Um, letter size cardstock. So you can get a four measurements from her or letter size from me. 
So here we go. We got a half a sheet of cardstock folded in half. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple layers. So I'm going to bring in, um, where's my finish card? Oh, here it is. Okay, we're going to bring in some fresh freesia, just a little bit of it, and we're going to cut that down. We're going to cut that to four. I better make sure this is right. With two cards, we can't memorize all those measurements, Rachel. Just take a pause for a second and measure. Oh, gosh, see, I was wrong. It is four, ah, there's my cheat sheet right over there, four and a sixteenth. So we're going to cut to four and a sixteenth. And that means it's three sixteenths inch shorter on one side, which means we're going to go three sixteenths shorter in on this side. So it's four and a quarter plus a sixteenth. So four, I'm sorry, five and a quarter plus a sixteenth is five and five sixteenths. Okay, Orchid Oasis is cool, isn't it, Lanny? I love it too. I love this color so much. Okay, so there's one of our layers, which isn't an eighth of an inch difference. It's not a quarter of an inch difference. It's kind of in between, right? It's that in between mark. Okay, the next layer is gonna be 3 sixteenths shorter in both directions, which is actually gonna make it an easier dimension now. We're gonna go to um, five and an eighth, and this one is gonna be with our card base. So let me grab that card base now. We need the one with the window. Here it is. We need a card base that is five and an eighth by just under four. So three and um, seven eighths, which means we're cutting off this much. We're cutting off three eighths altogether. That means it is, and we're just going to cut down the middle here to get our cardstock to be the exact size first of all. So here's our here's our piece, right? It's four and a quarter by five and a half. We want to go in three sixteenths of an inch on each side. So three sixteenths of an inch is just over the eighth inch mark on that side and on this side. And that is going to give us a piece that is now, you can see here, three and seven eighths. For the top part, that's a little bit easier, or the, for the other measurements, a little bit, it's a little bit easier. We're just going to cut off three-eighths of an inch, okay? I know. It's like we're not going to make it balanced, but that's okay, and you'll see why later. We actually want a lot more of this to be towards the top. All right, we have those pieces done. We want one more piece that we are cutting, and that is going to be the leftovers of the other half of the kit card. We're going to cut it to the same size as the fresh freesia. So if you recall, that was four and a sixteenth by five and five sixteenths. So now these two pieces are exactly the same. Let's do some ruler pencil stuff. Bring in our ruler. And yes, a lot of you have said, I wish that they had rulers like that again. I do too. This is one of my favorite rulers but any ruler will do. We're gonna go to, uh, let's start with the big piece, and then we'll move on to the fresh freesia and, cord and matching white, and then we'll do our top layer. We're gonna measure and mark, and I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see. We're gonna measure in, and I wanna make sure I tell you right, you guys. Um, yeah, one and a half inches, right, Rachel, right? Yes, one and a half. So we're going to go to one and a half inches, and we're going to make a little mark there with our pencil. That way we can erase it later. We're also going to go one and a half inches up from the bottom. So we're going to start at the one and a half inch mark and put a little tick mark there. Okay, these little areas, those two marks, this mark and that mark up there, are going to get connected. You don't have to put that pencil line in there. I did it just so that you would see what I'm doing here. But we're going to take those um, two spots and we're going to line them up in our trimmer and we're going to cut. And the um, so you can see what I did. I connected the point so you can see the line. But again, you don't have to put the line in there. You can just line up that top little mark in the channel of the trimmer and this bottom little mark in the channel of the trimmer. 
And that's how you're going to do the next piece too. We're going to cut it off. So go ahead and erase any pencil lines that you might need to erase, that sort of thing. Okay, next. These two. These two are going to get marked with one and five sixteenths instead. And because this is white on white, let's bring back that. It's a mess, you guys. Look at this desk. Oh, here it is. <laughs> We're going to bring this back so you can see the contrast. What did I say? One and five sixteenths, right? <laughs> Thanks, Tina. All right, so we're going to go to one and a quarter plus a sixteenth. And that's our little mark for that one. And on this side, same thing. One and a quarter plus a sixteenth and mark it. Okay, we're going to connect those two points with the trimmer. Let's first mark this one. One and five sixteenths, one and five sixteenths. Okay, so cutting those two spots. Let's line it up. Now this is the way you can do it without having to draw that huge line. You just go like that. See? Easy. You don't have to draw the line. Okay, we want those two pieces and, oh, and we need this piece. Save that piece. And let's go ahead and cut this. Save all your triangles that you're cutting off. Can you see what I'm doing? Yes. Okay. So now cut that one. Oops, lining it up. There we go. Those are done. Now the last one is this piece. And this one is our top layer on our card. We're going to go to one and an eighth. One and one eighth inches, mark it. One and one eighth inches, and mark it. And then we're going to trim. And now you'll see, when we cut this, you're going to see exactly why we cut more off at the top than cutting an equal amount on the top and bottom. So let's line those two marks up like that and slice. Now we have a portion of the window that's in the triangle. We're actually still needing to cut this down a bit, so it's okay that the portion of the window has a lot of the window in it because um, we're going to go in even deeper now. When I say that, let's just take a look at everything but the white layer. Here's our purple layer. Here's our white layer. See how it's all lining up? And then here's our other layers. But look at this. These are not going to layer within each other at all. They're not. In fact, they're exactly the same size. So now what we need to do is we need to trim down these two pieces. And I love the trick that Sylvia shared. So she took one of her flat edges here, like a, a right angle corner here, and she lined it up with the, and I want to say it was the quarter inch. Yes, it was the quarter inch. So she took it right to the quarter inch mark and did this. Okay, then she took her purple piece and she put that long side against that flat edge. So this is flush against the top. This is connecting with that half inch. It's exactly a half inch this way, right? You hold it and you cut. And now we've cut off a quarter of an inch. We're going to shove this over this way to the half inch mark. And we're going to bring in this piece now. And we're going to cut a half inch strip from that side. It's so clever. <laughs> All right, so let's line everything up. Where's my finished card? I have to peek at it. Okay, so let's line everything up. In fact, you know what? We're going to get into the corners. I've transferred this glue into a precision tip bottle for a reason. It's just much easier for me. So I'm going to go ahead and put a thin line of glue here if it will come out. There we go. And a thin line of glue here. It's easier to get into corners if you're using this kind of adhesive rather than like a tape adhesive. Let's line those up like that. 
and like this. Everything's centered. This is so fun, you guys. I cannot stand it. <laughs> Hang on. There. Okay, it's sitting in the right spot. Now we're going to grab our card base, bring that in. This piece is going to get stuck down right in that spot. So it's going to connect again. It's as if we did surgery and then we healed it. Broken, broken arm, but now it's connected again to its body. Okay, so keep this flat. Put this right against it. And stick that down so everything lines up. Okay, this white piece is perfect. Remember, it's the same size layer as this one. This would be the piece that goes on the inside. And I am going to glue it down. Now, Sylvia's um, video, she did not glue it down first because she had to do some stamping along the bottom. That made sense. So if you're going to be doing some stamping um, that goes off the edge, you'll want to do your stamping first and then connect. So that goes in here like that. We're going to do the same thing with this piece here. Make sure you're putting the glue on the correct side. <laughs> there is a front and a back now that you've cut it at an angle. This gets put down here like that. And then the window piece goes on top of that. I did make, I showed you at the beginning, I did make an A4 size because I needed to first follow her directions with supplies that I had and, you know, again, adapting to things that I wanted to do. So I did make this version. I'm going to, you know, open it up so you can see. So it's using the Enjoy the Adventure designer paper, the fun lightning bug, um, set with the thanks for lighting the way comment. You are all kinds of wonderful. So there's the inside of that one. I'll have that with um, the um, measurements and directions and all that stuff in a future blog post. So stay tuned. But there we go. Now how do we decorate this one? We're going to decorate this one with, um, where did it go? Oh, we need another one of those pots. You know what? I'm just going to tell you because this is easy enough. You got the hard part done. I'm going to go ahead and move on um, and I'm going to show you the finished one. So this is the finished one. What did I do to get this here? This piece here in the back is the branch that is like a double branch. So it's the one that's in the middle. And I took and I put um, little dabs of glue or you could use the glue dots from the kit and I put that down first and stuck that on like that. It's okay that that is sticking out in the corner here because when you open it up, it's fun to see a little bit of a, a branch on the other side, right? Um, so that went down first and I made sure with my pot that I used, I used that purple pot again, um, that the, the plant would be coming up and out of it. You can have your plant sink down a little lower if you want to, it's totally fine. Um, so that's where I stuck that down and then I brought in the purple branches um, there's a few purple branches in the kit that look like this. They're really cute and rounded. And so I stuck one of those down next. And then I stuck down one of these. And you get plenty of these in the kit too. Be really careful because these are super fragile, super thin. And you want to glue as many petals as you can. You obviously want to avoid putting glue on the corner one up here because it's going to be exposed. So it was first the green one, then it was this one, then it was this one on top. But do you, did you notice there's a little bit of a lift on that one because I added little portions of dimensionals on the backs of this leaf, this leaf, this leaf, this one, and this one. The rest are kind of floating free, but it gives it more dimension. It gives it more depth. The pot is also up on dimensionals. You can see it's lifted. So I added that with the dimensionals. And then the sentiment strip is up on dimensionals. Another reason why I wanted to cut only up here on the background piece rather than down here because I wanted to have room for my sentiment strip along there. I stuck a few butter butterflies here. This one you obviously only see when the card is closed. And then when you open it, I put another one on the inside. This one I did stamp. <laughs> I did stamp that before I stuck it down, silly Rachel. So I'll have to figure out some, uh, you know what I'll do? I'll do this. I'll take post-it notes, sticky notes or whatever, and I'll put one here and I'll put one here 
and then I'll do my stamping on my branches. So it will kind of omit getting the Oasis, Orchid Oasis cardstock full of ink. I stamped the sentiment after it was added in though, because I thought it was easier to center when it was added in. Um, this green is garden green. This is Orchid Oasis. So I did bring in a couple different ink pads other than the kit color for this card, along with the cover, you know, different card stock and the, and the butterflies. Um, I did stamp off though. Have you heard of that? Where you take and you ink up your stamp and then you stamp it onto your scrap paper to get some of the ink off and then you stamp it down again and you get a lighter version of the ink. So that's how I got the lighter green. I have another card to show you. One more card. I hope I can balance all this stuff in the spot. There's a lot of stuff on the desk. Um, and we will pull this back in because you'll want to see that. Let's just grab this right now and just kind of spread it out. I'm going to close up this ink pad. <laughs> Zoom out a little bit here so you can see. Okay, so um, I did make one other card. This one I cannot claim though as my own. Oh, it's busy with the scrapbook pages. Let's just pull the scrapbook pages out of there. This one I did not make on or come up with on my own though. This one is actually from the inspiration on, here it is, the back of the flyer. So the back of the flyer has these three lovely projects. This one was used in the advertising before the kit came out. This one was demonstrated in a separate paper pumpkin video, not fully demonstrated, but they showed how to get the um, stencil look on the bag. And then this is the one that I just did and put together using the kit products. So it does involve, because you can see this piece here is die cut, it would involve ha having the die cutting machine, um, the stylish shapes, I did some embossing on there, but you could instead just punch out a piece of white cardstock and stamp it with, um, you know, the pink that comes in the kit or the same color that you're using back here, uh, which could be pink. You could use the pink in the kit and have pink flowers instead of fresh freesia flowers. But I brought in the fresh freesia ink, which is not in front of me. Um, and I used a blending brush to get the background kind of hazy purple. And then I took the uh, stamp that looks like this and stamp that randomly kind of around the circle stuck down my leaves added some elegant trim which is the gold and there we go so again here's your bonus stamp set you can change your words to say happy spring happy Easter happy anniversary I'm happy to call you my friend um, instead of just happy Mother's Day, right? So, or happy birthday. So this set, this extra set really does give you some options. Um, 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 um. Stay tuned on the Paper Pumpkin Facebook group. Paper Pumpkin Fan Club, I should call it. That's the name of the club or the group. It is a huge group. People are sharing on there all the time. Um, lots of car cards ideas already with this kit. Check out Pinterest. Pinterest is another great place that I go to for inspiration for the card kits. You'll want to check that out. Um, what else do I want to share before I sign off? We have prizes. You want to do prizes? Um, we're going to go ahead and um, just announce that next week I will be live again. I've got uh, a card using some citrus images. Um, and also uh, has kind of a fun mapping out base. It's, it's a faux quilt base, I think is what VTran called it. So I'm going to use some of her ideas in the card that I'm doing next week. Um, a big thank you again to Maria Friedman and to Sylvia Werner. Let me grab the prizes. Let me grab the prizes. Oh, here they are. Okay. So last week we had some winners. We had winners that won quarter packs of this fabulous celebration pack of papers that was available as a free product. You can always use more paper, right? And we were doing Easter eggs last week. So paper, great for Easter egg decorating or anything cheerful, spring-like, um, just nice soft pastel designs. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to share the computer screen with you now. Um, let me first bring you to this page. 
oops, hang on. <laughs> okay, sorry, and now you're seeing all my bookmarks. Let's just go like this, view, there we go. Okay, so here is my blog. Here is the menu that I was mentioning before. If you click on that, you're going to see um, you know, where you can sign up for Paper Pumpkin, where you can learn more about it, um, ordering prepaids and how you do that because that's a whole different thing. Um, recent paper pumpkin posts, older ones, my paper pumpkin pins, uh, stamp set case inserts. So if you want to you know, put all your stamp sets into different cases. So there's a whole plethora of things right there. Let's go to these tabs now. We have winners that um, we can announce from last week's video after live comments. We have a winner. Uh, from YouTube and that's Hildy who commented on what an excellent card R R R wasn't that funny and then we also have from um, Facebook we have Kathleen uh, McLaugh McLaughlin Zuckerman uh, watching from Florida thank you so much to you two for commenting here is my email address so you can both reach out to me and claim your prize I will put your names also in the blog post connected to the video that you'll see in the description of the video. So you can always go there if you're not sure if your name was called. And now we're gonna just peek to see, I'm gonna go back um, away from, let's just, uh, so, oh, I have to announce the prize. For, for the today's prize winners, oh good, she already announced the names, here we go. Donna Marshall and Linda, Branich. Um, now, what do the what did those gals win? Let's go down to the desktop and take a peek again. Um, let me move this out of the way, and I'm going to show you now what they get to pick from. So, scoot these out of the way here. I have kit leftovers from lots of different kits. I have um, these stamp sets. I have this cute one. I have oh gosh, I have three of those. Well, this one was slightly used. Um, but there we go. You have a choice of different stamp sets from past kits. You also get a clear block that is a kit block. Um, those are those are always handy. I have a collection of them that I use when my D blocks are used up, right? So, and then we also have adhesive. I have a ton of leftover kit adhesive. I just can't go through all my adhesive. When you're a kit collector, you collect a lot of adhesive. So um, I'll be giving those things out. So gals that just got named, make sure again that you're reaching out to me so that you can claim your prize and tell me which stamp image set that you want. You don't even have to name them. Just say, oh, the one with the um, chameleon or the one with all the thanks or the one with the frog, you know? So we can do it that way. Next week, we will be live again. Um, we're going to be live on, what would that date be? March 29th. I don't have my cheat sheet. <laughs> March 29th is a huge day in the world of Stampin' Up. It is also the day that Stampin' Up is going to announce to its demonstrator base new color changes coming. And it's not just the in colors. We're going to find out shortly after the live next week what colors are going to be coming into play in the new upcoming catalog. So you bet your bottom dollar that when pre-order happens on April 4th for us demonstrators, I'm going to be buying up the new colors so that I can do one of my color comparison videos. If you've missed them in the past, you'll want to tune in. It's a great way to compare colors that you may still have on hand, um, colors that are current, colors that are old, uh, to the new colors. And um, what else do I want to share? Just stay tuned for, for my blog. I mean, May tw um, March 29th and the weeks to follow, there's going to be so much shared. So subscribe even. You know, go to my website at stampyourartout.com and find the subscribe tab and click on it and subscribe to my blog post so that you don't miss out on the news coming up. Um, I think that's it. I think. I think. I hope. I hope I covered it all. I am I missing anything, you guys? New catalog begins uh, early April. Uh, retiring list will get posted on March 29th for the current catalogs. Mm, I can't think. Because my cheat sheet, my little thing that I usually look at is like buried on my table. So I hope I covered it all. <laughs> I'm going to let you guys all go. Thanks so much for um, your, your attendance. Thank you, Lisa and um, Trisha for being there for us. And um, don't forget to like, subscribe all that good stuff. Share. Take care, everyone. Have a great, great week, and we'll see you on the 29th. Now, I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out.
Bye-bye.